Howdy peeps, uh, welcome to yet another, it seems, in my series of how I do videos. Today we will be looking at painting tracks. Um, the techniques apply to pretty much any track there is. These will just, as happenstance, be uh, T90 tracks. Now, what we're planning to get, and this probably not show up too well, is an effect similar to what we have on the front, as you can see, on the SU-101. Uh, which, to me, looks... You know, and these aren't finished, I've still got to put pigments and stuff on, but... As you can see, a basic kind of... mucky, slightly rusty, kind of used track. There's a slightly different... Obviously, way of doing it for brand new track links that haven't been used. So, where do we start? Well, first thing here's here's something I prepared earlier. Is a just a small run of the Indie Link tracks from the T90 that was spare. Um, glued together. I didn't bother with the guide horns just for this. And then primed with the ooh, Ultimate Black Primer. Superb stuff. Then this, in this case, I used the Mr. Color Super Metallic Super Iron. Um, as it's a good metal shade. Um, not too bright, not too dull. Oh, you can always go, just for an example, we have some, that's probably not going to pick up because of glare, gun metal, gun grey, uh, metallic black, you can go full on steel, chrome, whatever you like. The effect you're after, it's up to you. I'm just showing you how I do it. Now once this has all had plenty of time to dry and cure, which it has, First thing I do is I get my track wash, which yeah, I'm lazy, I went bought an actual bottle of track wash, this is my second one, the first one dot, uh, ran out, and we give that a good shaking up, plenty of teddy, because they do settle quite badly being enamels, and That's mixed enough. We're not looking to be subtle or delicate here, so we're grabbing a nice sizable. This is a size 5 brush. Make sure the bristles are well, probably not quite as badly splayed as that, but never mind. And we're going to have to knock most of the excess wash out because the amount this brush will carry will probably do a full set of tracks. So. Now, literally just slather it on all over. Make sure it goes in all the recesses, all the crooks and fannies. Not forgetting we have four sides to a set of tracks. Because it is very easy to forget the inner and outer edges. For the end. I'll just slather it over the inside. I wouldn't normally do it this way on the inside of a T90 track because they're rubber pads. I would normally just go down the outside, inside and across the um, track pins. And then paint the rubber pads after. That's the sneak and cheat there. Um, if you paint them beforehand then you've got to be very careful where you put the wash. Because you don't want the wash that's supposed to look like worn metal on your rubber track pads. So if you put the wash on first, then put your track pads painted, problem solved. That'll give the brush a quick degunk in a scale modeling style of Bob Ross. Um, put that to one side. Um, yes, as it's an enamel wash, that's just a little pot of white spirit I keep on the bench handy. Now once those have dried, you don't have to wait a huge amount of time. 
you end up with a run of tracks that look a little like this. Now we can clean them up if we want, and there are two ways or several ways of doing it. You can either get a cotton wool bud and sit here cleaning it off uh, using a bit of white spirit, which would probably strip everything off this, which I'll just have a go at. Never know, might get a happy accident. Or has that been drying for too long? Yeah, that's been drying for quite some time, and you can see by the colour of the cotton wool, but it is coming off. But if you only leave it a couple of hours till it's just touch dry, you can literally just rub the excess off with your thumb. You will end up with a brown coloured thumb, but you'll just take it off of the high raised surfaces. <coughs> and that basically takes you to where, well, takes me to where I'd mount the tracks onto the mod for adding more weathering actually in situ on, on the vehicle as it were, as in as we can see, the T90, the tracks are on, they're at the same stage they just had that wash, I have painted the pads black because this is the model and there goes my home phone, it's probably someone telling me I've not got a job anyway once we got to this point and tracks are on the model, next thing to do is to pick out and highlight all the raised surface detail. Now there are again several ways of doing that. You can either use a normal artist, you know, just a normal drawing pencil. Uh, there's mine. Just a little 4B, so a nice soft artist pencil. Uh, got a Graphite pencil as well, which does the same thing, it's just a bit of a dark tone. I'll show you on a few of these. Literally just run it across. And the graphite will sit on the higher areas. And you probably can't see that's made much of a difference because I'll rub this off a bit. And we do exactly the same thing with the pencil. Literally just run it over and it will pick out all the high points. The other way, and the way I like to do it, is with pigments. Now we have, again, just a gunmetal pigment, nothing new or super spectacular or shiny. Well, quite shiny. But. And again, there are multiple plays of white, ways of applying these. Put my teeth in. Either use your finger, a brush, up until very recently I used the cotton wool bud, or Q-tip, a little bit of pigment on the cotton wool bud, and just run it all over and it will just grab onto the raised and pronounced surfaces. But rather than scrab through your cotton wool buds at an alarming rate of knots, you can get these, which is a tip and I actually remember who I heard it from because I heard it this week from Mick Himaneth and Gilbert Mondragon of Red Dragon Model Works uh, and Starian Syndicate now these are I say colour shaper or clay shaper or whatever they happen to call them and they're basically a brush but instead of bristle they have a soft silicon rubber head I suppose you'd call it Technically, it's a brush, so it's a brush head. And what you can do with this, literally just drop it into your pigment, pick a little bit of pigment up on it, and literally just like it was a paintbrush, just brush the pigment on. And you can see it picking out the high points. So they go nice and bright and silvery. And we're keeping the low points dark and murky and manky, which is pretty much what we want. This is simulating where the tracks have either you know gone on a road or a hard surface rather than mud and parts that would come in contact with the road or moving surfaces 
would clean up naturally and any rust would be scraped back to clean steel or iron or whatever they happen to be made out of. Um, known Russian tanks these are probably pot metal. Um, <laughs> can't see them being anything too high tech. Again it's probably not going to pick up but because of glare or something but as you see the part I've done up to probably about there-ish. All the erased detail is picked out nice and bright and shiny. We'll do the same down the outside edge. Not that there is an outside and an inside edge, they're the same either side. And again we it'll just grab onto the edges of all the pin blocks and the pins. Uh, just give you an extra layer. So voila. Once we've done that, give that a little wipe off. Not too uh, there we go, got it. Once we've got our tracks to that stage, um, I then usually install them on the vehicle and weather them to suit. So for example with that SU-101, which I'll bring back into shot, it's got fairly dark mud and muck and mire on it. So when it comes to adding pigments into the tracks, I will add a darker brown, probably something in a burnt umber. Something similar to the shade of the mud, anyway. However, the T90, as it's an Indian tank, well, it's Indian Army, Russian tank still, obviously. Um, and I will be depicting it as having run through dusty areas. The dust will obviously be a lighter colour, and it will also match nicely with the paintwork. So for that, let's have a look-see what we have. Now, this is another case of just because a product has a name on the top of it, it doesn't mean it's all you can use it for. For example, this is MIG's Fresh Wood. But, as you'll see, it's a nice, kind of dusty, sandy sort of colour. Now, we'll find a suitable brush in amongst the wreckage on the desk. Just a random ancient, I think is a rebel brush. Um, for some reason I've got tape around the handle, I probably snapped it at some point. And following a similar system to we did with the uh, rubber headed brush, where you just take this, and we pop a bit of pigment into mainly the sunken areas, but you know, give them a decent covering. It doesn't have to be perfect because if each track link looks the same it will look wrong um, you need a bit of variations so, we'll go with that blow the excess out we we'll just do a little bit here because we're running out running on a bit and I'm trying to keep my videos a little shorter these days and we can build up with different colours of pigments or before we add pigments different colours of washes as well you don't have to use a certain colour use whichever colours work for whichever situation you're putting your vehicle in uh, something in Vietnam you'd probably want a more of a redder mud colour Russian steppes you want a dark thick browny peaty colour Obviously you get different colour soils all over the place, but as a general rule, that's the kind of subsoil that happens in those areas. Yeah. <coughs> and again, like any time with pigments, if you because I've not used any pigment fixer and I won't, I'll the uh, nearest I'll get to using that will be when I give it a matte coat at the end. Or you can just brush back over take out as much as we want really or leave as much as we want uh, 
and if if we want afterwards we can go back over with the gun metal and pick up some of the highlights a little more it's just a case of finding and fine tuning so you get what you want not everyone likes the same look not everyone likes the same uh, you can see it much better there where it's picking up and we'll go just along the very edges as I say it's all down to personal taste the story you're trying to tell with your model uh, how it would be I, you could be doing a fantasy model something based in Warhammer 40,000 on some strange alien world or whatever and it could have fluorescent pink mud if that's what your world has and you just choose the right <laughs> colours to match as it were <coughs> so basically what I'm saying is this is the basic way I do it any fine tune is just it's just uh, mixing up the colours a little, going with the flow, playing it by ear. But that right there, I'll get you a bit closer and try and cut the glare out from the window. That is how I do tracks. And on that bombshell, I will say fairly well, twist it that way, break my wrist. Um, have fun, build a model, paint a model, browse for models, whatever makes you happy. Just have fun with your hobby. Bye bye.